day, Africa, and welcome to AU Talks on AU TV. AU TV, the voice of higher education in Africa. My topic for today's discussion is the massification of higher education in Africa. My name is Irene Dufier Ade, and I am your host for today's program. We'll go for a short break, and when we we'll come back, I would introduce to you my very special guest for today's discussion. Stay tuned. Are you an institution or individual? Do you intend to organize a memorable event to be archived for future reference? Then look no further than AAU Studios because it's your best bet. With our spacious studio and state-of-the-art media equipment such as 4K Panasonic video cameras, Kinoflow lights, assorted microphones, live streaming machines and others, you are sure to get the best of production. Visit us at Trinity Avenue, East Legon, adjacent the National Accreditation Board or contact the AAU studio via the following addresses. Info at aau.org, aautv at aau.org, ransford at aau.org. Alternatively, you can call us on 0244-185-998 or 244 Nine three three four two. Welcome back to AU Talks on AAU TV. My very special guest for today's program is Professor Bakri Diallo, who is the Rector of Africa Virtual University. Thank you, Prof, for joining us this morning. My pleasure. Thank you very much. We want to talk about AVU, that is Africa Virtual University, and the importance of um, it for higher education in Africa. So before we go on, can you tell us a little bit of AVU, your awards, some of your achievements, and the things you've done for Africa higher education? Uh, thank you very much, uh, and uh, thank you for this opportunity to be part of uh, um, AAU TV, yeah. and uh, um, to also to have this opportunity to talk about uh, virtual virtual uh, learning in Africa. Mm. Uh, AVU, as you uh, rightfully said, is the uh, African Virtual University. It started uh, um, in 1997, that is 22 years ago. Right. Um, it has a long um, history. Uh, actually, it was a project from the World Bank mm. then. And um, the purpose of AVU then was uh, to address what they call then the digital divide. They felt like um, in the 1990s, uh, the West were very connected compared to Africa. Yeah. So they had this idea um, to have learning centers across Africa mm. and to use uh, digital broadcasting and to have professors, uh, lecturers in, in the US, in Canada, in the West to provide science, mathematics and science courses to Africa. That's how it started. Right. Um, and then a few years later, in 2000, uh, they wanted to relocate it to Africa, and Kenya um, volunteered to host the African Virtual University, so that's why we are here. Mm. Um, and three years later, that was in 2003, five countries decided to make ABU an intergovernmental organization. Mm. So it came from a project to be an intergovernmental organization. So to date, we have 19 African countries that have signed our charter. Right. However, we uh, operate in 30 African countries, mainly Sub-Saharan Africa, mm. in French, English, and Portuguese. Oh, that means it cuts across almost. Well, almost, yeah, almost. Um, and we, we partner in each of these countries. We work with the Ministry of Education or Higher Education, depending where yeah, uh, you're the <laughs> <you> from. <coughs> yeah. yeah, and um, uh, we partner with institutions uh, uh, across the continent mm. um, and uh, up to date uh, I can tell you with our partner institution we were able to train more than 55,000 learners oh. I think inception um, we have had uh, several awards mostly outside of Africa mm. in the uh, field of open education um, um, there is a global body called the Open Education Consortium, which I was a member of the board and treasurer for about four or five years. Okay. What we do, we promote um, open content in Africa, yeah. how to share content, and ABU has been leading Africa in this. In we have a library that uh, actually has several hundred of content that are free and uh, can be accessed for anywhere, anyone in the world. 
Um, we do work with governments. Um, as you say rightfully, massification is important in Africa. Yeah. One of our mandates is to increase access to higher education through the innovative use of uh, ICT, oh, yeah. um, which is uh, information and communication technologies. Mm. Uh, as you know, um, the um, access to higher education for school leavers in Africa, the average in sub-Saharan Africa, is between seven and eight, eight percent. percent. Yeah. You know, and um, it's it's not eight percent or seven percent in in every country. Some countries are below that. Below yeah. around two percent. Other countries are 12, um, 10 percent. But the majority of African countries are not able to provide high education to their um, um, to their youth, and this is a big problem because you see. Um, the economists tell us that we need 10 to 12 percent of university graduates to sustain economic development. Mm. Uh, in Africa, we are not. We are saying that access, not graduate, is less than 8 yeah. percent, which means that we don't have the um, the required human capital mm. to sustain economic development in Africa. Right. So, so that's that's the issue. Yeah. We, we are talking about Africa Virtual University. Yes. And virtual means it's not present, right, yes. there and then. But generally, w you do what normal general universities do. Yes. Do you do the same courses as the, n the normal standard universities, the physical buildings that we go to, or you do something else? What is your niche in terms of um, what you put out on your programs and then the courses? Yes, uh, that's what I was coming up to. Um, for instance, a country like Ghana or Senegal or here in Kenya, uh, to be able to accommodate all school leavers, a uh, state will have to create universities, mm. a lot of universities. And we know that that is very expensive, and they take time, actually, to enroll students. Right. Um, why we are promoting virtual, virtual university, we don't need infrastructure, big right. infrastructure. You don't need campuses, big campuses. Um, and what is attractive is that we see, uh, we see uh, e-learning, virtual learning, open education are a shortcut uh, for government. And that's how we are, um, for instance, uh, helping governments in terms of technical support. Uh, we did that in Senegal. They have what we call now the uh, University Virtual de Senegal. Mm. We are helping all the government to set up uh, virtual universities. Uh, but also we work with universities um, to help them integrate e-learning so that they can expand access to higher education. Mm. Um, our model of operation, our model, uh, the question you are asking, is um, we do have formal courses, informal courses, um, and the way we uh, offer our programs, the course, the e-learning courses, is the lecturer is based anywhere, can be based anywhere, as far as um, he or she has access to the internet. Uh, okay. The course is uploaded in the cloud, so you don't see any big machines around. Everything is in the cloud. Right. Uh, we have a virtual learning environment, uh, and the virtual learning environment provide the right envi environment for teaching and learning to take class. Whatever you can do in the classroom, mm. you'll be able to do that um, online. But it takes special training yeah. and uh, to, to be able to do so. Right. And uh, um, evaluations are done online depending on, on the nature of the courses. Um, and some evaluation are done face to face. So basically that's, that's what we do and the learners can be based anywhere in the world. Yeah. Yeah. We, we are talking about how these are done through the internet and all of that. Yeah. But we want to talk about, we want to face reality in Africa. Yes. As these things are driven by um, technologies and, and ICT. How are people who are somehow in the areas, uh, the rural areas, who don't have access to internet, how are they able to access the virtual universities? Because if we look at the statistics, these are the people who are not getting the education. 
And so if these challenges are there, how do they assess um, virtual universities, especially well, on our continent? Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question. And this is one of the challenges ABU has been facing since mm. 22 years ago, well, you know, when it was established. It's, it's much better than it, the way it was mm. uh, 20 years ago when ABU started. Mm. Um, they were using at that time uh, broadcast, uh, and it was very expensive. Mm. But at least now, if you look at the penetration of internet in Africa, mm. it's much better into getting better. So there is hope. Um, and like I said at the beginning, uh, if we and our partners were able to train 75,000 learners, despite all the challenges, it's mm. feasible. But we do have challenges. Mm. Access to the internet, um, access to devices. Um, reliable electricity. Right. Uh, so th these are some of the um, um, the issues, but also the mindset of people. They do not know what virtual learning is. Mm. Are they comfortable with virtual yeah. learning? So this is something that we work on in, ta in terms of sensitization and, and, and actually demonstrating that graduates from virtual universities, virtual learning are as better or sometimes much better Hi than those that do who graduated uh, from face-to-face -face universities. Um, but to solve, to address those issues, what we do, what AVU did since day one, is to uh, set up what we call learning centers. Mm. Um, for instance, uh, we have installed uh, 30, 20, 28 learning centers recently. Um, in 21 African countries with funding from the African Development Bank. Mm. And these learning centers are located within universities. So basically it's a, it's a center with computers, servers, everything you need mm. uh, to, to do e learning, mm. but even with a power generator mm. so that the center runs 24 hours a day. And also we connect the center to the internet in some countries uh, we have challenges with uh, um, the fiber so that we use yeah. a VSAT, uh, a satellite, to connect the center. So those centers are really autonomous. And if a student has issue, for instance, um, accessing the internet, they can go from time to time to those centers, yeah. download the courses. Yeah. Uh, if there is a li live broadcast, they can, they can catch up there. And uh, so we actually um, uh, have been addressing the issue of the internet, access to the internet, access to devices, and uh, reliable electricity. Fortunately, um, we have a lot of mobile phones in Africa. You cannot learn um, throughout by with mobile phone, but you can download something. So it's a mix of using a mobile phone, for instance, your computer, accessing a learning center. If we that help students now to be able to take uh, uh, virtual learning courses. Okay, so w from what you're saying, I have two questions, and my mm -hmm. question is, first of all, we know when you are finishing your normal degree education in those traditional institutions, you come out with researchers. How you come up with research, uh, research. research yes, mostly a, a thesis, dissertation, and all of that. Is it done same with you, and how is quality checked on some of these researches that are being done? Uh, listen, um, uh, when we set up a program, mm. an online program, depending on the subject, mm. um, there is a percentage of that program that will be online and the percentage of the course that will be face-to-face. -face. Right. For instance, uh, we had a bachelor on computer science that run um, a uh, few years back, um, uh, we had from in the Francophone network. I think we had nine universities mm. um, in eight countries, and the same size of uh, in the Anglophone countries. But what was done is that the lectures, because this is computer science, right. you really have to right. practice. Practical. So the lectures were done online. They were done online, and then they were actually um, saved on our learning management system, so that if you missed it, you can play it again. And if you were there and you wanna listen again, the course, the lecture, you can do it again. And then we have tutors. Yeah. Uh, so the professor will base um, in 
on other countries, but in each of the countries we have a tutor at the center. So that tutor will help the students to do the practicals. Right. You see. Yeah. So because that is computer science. So mm -hmm. you need a part of practice. Uh, so if it is for instance a course that is uh, in business that doesn't need um, now practical, then you can have the course uh, online, 100% um, uh, uh, online. If there is a research component, it means that um, you will have a c to have a committee, mm. to set up a committee. Right. I've been committee of thesis, uh, not in IVU, but in Canada at uh, 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 online university in Canada called Atabasca, okay. where the student actually were um, defending and I was in Nairobi, <laughs> another board, <laughs> another member was in, in Asia, okay. uh, so it's possible right. to have a committee and that we meet, you know, um, um, online. So basically, um, uh, uh, most of the courses, the programs that we have on the continent right. can be taught online. Mm -hmm. And this is, like I say, a blessing for the continent, giving, mm -hmm. you know, the shortcut, uh, the, the, uh, the issues we are having with, with massification. That's right. So we'll go for a short break, and when we come back, we'll continue with our discussion. If you just tune in, this is AU Talks on AU TV. You can follow us on our social media handles, Association of African Universities, on YouTube and Facebook. Do stay tuned. African Virtual University is a pan-African intergovernmental organization established by charter with the mandate of significantly increasing access to quality higher education and training through the innovative use of information and communication technologies. This video gives a brief of AVU, who we are, what we do, our achievements and future plans. Providing education to all has been a challenge for African governments and their partners. Education stakeholders are looking for ways to increase success to quality education. In the late 1990s, the innovative use of information and communication technologies opened a new horizon for teaching and learning. It was in such context that the African Virtual University was initiated in 1997 with the aim of facilitating the use of effective open distance and e-learning in African institutions of tertiary education. Since then, AVU has formulated distance education and programs and initiated activities to promote provision of degree and other courses through collaboration between various universities worldwide and universities in Africa. Welcome back to a Talks on AETV and today we are discussing the massification of higher education in Africa. And I'm here with Professor Dialu Bati, who is the Rector of Africa Virtual University. Thank you, Pro. Before we went on the break, we were talking about um, the, the programs that we have on Africa Virtual University. Mm -hmm. want to dive more on it. Is it the same as the traditional university institutions? Is it, are we doing physics? Are we doing chemistry? Or there are certain programs that are special to virtual university? Right, I think uh, that's a very good question. Um, the program that we run actually is um, uh, set by uh, the General Assembly of the African Virtual University. Um, our structure is that uh, um, on top of management we have a board of directors and the board members as president, rectors, vice chancellors of member universities. Mm -hmm. um, we have the five African regions, you know, um, and in each European region we have uh, elected member. And um, at the General Assembly, uh, every two years, they decide where ABU should go, what program ABU should take, what, what programs and what activities ABU should, should undertake. Um, since inception, the thought has been on math and sciences. Mm. And that's where ABU has been the most active, right. mathematics, uh, STEM education. 
Mm. Um, and um, our donors, uh, like uh, the African Development Bank, also um, uh, thought that this that that is a important uh, um, um, subject area for us to focus on, especially uh, STEM for for females in mm. Africa. Um, that said, uh, we are basically um, um, changing our model. Uh, two years ago, three years ago, the board decided the AVU should be helping universities, capacity building, but we should be more aggressive in terms of providing programs across Africa. So we are opening up, um, uh, we are changing how the way we used to, uh, to develop and, 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 and offer programs because the programs we were offering were in conjunction with the partner institutions. Mm. So we now we are going to do those things ourselves. Yeah. And I think the areas we are going to move in are the areas that are in demand in Africa. So we are doing a, um, uh, a survey uh, to determine what are the courses that are the most in demand. And now um, with our mission, we will determine which courses we are going to, to offer. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, we want to talk about quality of yes. virtual education because yeah. I have always started courses, Coursera, and a lot of them which are online and I never complete them. Yeah, you're not, Mostly you're not because online. maybe they are free yeah. or because it's difficult always being in front of the laptop instead of finding the teachers. How is this timing, the timing first of all ensured and then quality ensured? Do you have specific time to complete a course or since it's virtual, is it liberal? How, how does it go when we are talking about it, the quality and how it is being handled by the students who are doing it? All right, so I think you have to um, make a difference between informal courses mm. and formal courses, right. um, self-learning courses. Um, Coursera is doing kind of self-learning courses. Right. You learn at your own pace. Um, and then um, uh, you move from one module to um, another right. module. Yeah. And if you complete all the modules, I think it's 80%, the 78%, yeah. then you succeed. But you don't talk to anyone, you yeah. don't see anyone, but you can. So this is um, uh, self-paced learning. It's one way that is very, very effective for professional development. Mm. For someone who is a professional and you want to learn something, you want to improve. Yeah. Uh, long life learning, let's say. Yeah. But if you want to move to degree programs, master's program, then you really need to structure. And the structure is not, the structure of the program is not that different from, from, the, from the universities. Mm. What is different is the way you deliver. Okay. The mode of delivery. The mode of delivery is, mm. is different. Mm. So, but uh, you have our credits, so you have, um, um, you must have internal quality assurance. You must be accredited by, you know, um, the national accreditation. accreditation body. You must go through all those. And, and um, it's not, uh, let's say what is different um, um, is the way, the environment in which the programs are delivered. Mm. But you must, you must, quality is important. Right. Especially on online learning. Um, we do have a uh, internal quality assurance mechanism. Mm. We have adopted a, uh, a document that ensures that the quality of the courses, the quality of delivery, the, delivery, the yeah. quality of the technology you're using, the quality of the students. Mm. Uh, like it is basically uh, similar to what you see in traditional universities, mm. but we uh, focus on technology, for instance which you don't see mostly in universities. Right. But we need quality lecturers, we need quality professors, we need the quality students as any other institution, and the courses has to be completed for you to be, you Even know, to be accredited. Certificate. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. So we want to talk about accreditation and yeah. harmonization. You know, you, you, you said that every one of the institutions will be accredited in the country that they are in. So how do we harmonize the courses if we are having different accreditation from different institutions? And since it's virtual, I was thinking we would have then, we'll have one 
specific programs that cut across that everyone is doing. So how do you merge that? How do you merge all the programs you're doing to harmonize from so that everybody from a different, different countries would be able to get the same kind of education? Yeah, that's a very, very good question. Um, and we talk now about curriculum design, curriculum development mm. with our partner institutions. I can give you a short example. Uh, recently, uh, we have developed a, a bachelor um, um, of uh, com in computer science, applied computer science, with yeah. 18 universities. Um, in Ghana, we have, for instance, two universities. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, in Nairobi, we had three universities. In Senegal, we have two universities. Um, in Mozambique, we have one university. And this is across the three languages. So what we do, we ask each of these universities to come with the curriculum they have. Mm. We do curriculum harmonization. Right. It's a negotiation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but each university must fit itself, must see that I can actually offer this program. Okay. And then the curriculum is sent to the universities, go to their senate, it has to be approved. And once it's, it's approved, we have a harmonized, in each of these mm. universities, we have a harmonized curriculum, meaning that each of these university will be able to, you know, uh, offer that program. And then ABU, we, we go ahead and develop the program in two ways, face-to-face -face format and online format. Right. Um, and then it goes through the, the, the normal process for in each of these universities for them to offer the program. So this is what we have been doing for long. But now we are changing. So AVU is going to offer programs across Africa. It's a game changer. Yeah. And in terms of accreditation, um, the board is seeking um, how we should do that. Uh, definitely, we are not going to do it um, on our own. We'll be still working with the universities in Ghana, in Senegal, in, in Kenya. But um, we, will be, we will need to be accredited as, as an institution. Yeah. So we have to seek it. Um, we can do it different ways. We, have, we, we are in different countries. But this is something that, um, and what we believe is, for instance, if you have a degree from a traditional, from a fresh fresh university in Ghana, that degree should be have an equivalent in Kenya. Right. So we have to work out those details. Mm. It's, a, it's a very, um, uh, it's, it's a, a lot of work to, do, to be done across the continent. But fortunately, we have AAU with your experience. Yeah. We have the African Union with right. their experience uh, so that we will be working with partners to see how um, best we can do that. Yeah. And W talking about this, I'm taking this um, virtual university on a different tangent, which we've not spoken about, and that's on gender basis. Yeah. We know normally when women are coming up, childbirth, and then the processes, they don't normally continue education. And so this is coming in as a point to help um, improve um, education for women because they can be home and then they Absolutely. can still school, mm -hmm. they can still go further in their career. What, 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 what do you think in terms of it um, upgrading women in the society when we talk about virtual uh, Listen, um, this is not only true for Africa. I yeah. taught uh, online courses in Canada. Um, and uh, in my courses, sometimes you'll see, you'll hear yeah. a baby crying. <laughs> 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 so I think um, w what is attractive about online uh, virtual learning is flexible. Right. It's flexible. Uh, it, it's required discipline mm. for you to do everything, but it's flexible. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to be tied to being in a classroom for a lecture. Mm. We, we have erased that. Right. The lecture is available online. Um, and from time to time, there is a live lecture. If you want to be part of the li live lecture, you can be there and ask questions and interact. But most of the lecture is, is online. So. It's it means that um, people who normally will not be able to go exactly. on site, like females, mm. young females, and, and mom, mothers yeah. are able. So I think, um, and we have a specific policy on gender. Right. We have scholarship fund for gender, right. especially in math and science. Uh, we believe that um, overall, I think, 
um, through the African Virtual University, we can help, um, you know, um, we can help fill the gender gap that right. we are seeing in terms of education on the continent. Yeah. So lastly, we are going, what are you telling our viewers on virtual universities? What are you telling the other governments who are not on board on virtual universities and how important it is for us as a continent because we know by the next 2050, Africa would have a lot youthful population who would need education. And so there comes the importance of virtual education. What are your last words for them? And then tell them why we should enroll on into Africa Virtual University. Well, thank you very much. I think uh, we are at a place where in Africa we have huge problems. Governments are facing a lot of pressure. Every year, they are wondering how we are going actually to place these students who are coming from high school. Mm. What we are offering on the continent, it is an alternative where we work with government, with universities, side by side, mm. to help, to assist in expanding access to higher education through virtual education. So we are inviting, and I'm sure, I don't know any country on the continent right now who doesn't have a problem of access. Mm. I do not know. Mm. So we are inviting countries, we are inviting partners uh, to join with us, and then I think that we also need to open, have an open mind. Uh, Face-to-face, -face, traditional universities are there, and they'll be always there, right. but they are not able to actually meet the demand. So we are um, asking those who have not done so to join us so that we can, all of us, find an alternative in helping them to increase access to quality. Quality. Yes. Education. To quality education. But for talking about virtual universities, and we want to talk about one very important um, critical um, component of virtual universities, and that is the problem of cost. When we look at um, mostly traditional institutions or traditional higher education, mostly some of them are funded by the government uh, in terms of um, tuition cost and all of that. And then we have virtual universities where we need machines, we need equipment, we need the internet and all of that. Comparatively, which one is expensive and what can we do to help improve um, access to virtual universities if they are quite costly than traditional ones? Well, I think uh, for us, what we are, one of the things that we are looking at is the cost because uh, one of the barriers to accessing um, programs that are offered through virtual education, being degree programs, being professional development programs, being uh, continuing education programs, is actually cost. Mm. Most of us, Africans, cannot afford basically to pay. So we come up with models where um, our costs are lower than those of compared to face-to-face -face yeah, universities. Yeah. And you can understand that because we don't invest in buildings. We don't mm. we invest in, um, we don't have um, physical spaces, physical spaces yeah. to maintain. Um, and today, uh, basically, uh, every, you, we are using the cloud. You don't need big machinery. Everything, you know, you outsource all the, those services. In a, in a way that you have a very lean stuff um, and uh, you don't have a lot of overhead. So it's allow us to be very, very competitive in terms of costing mm. and being profitable. Mm. So I can assure you that the costing that we're using, if you compare to any face-to-face -face universities, we are doing much, uh, it's, it's, it's much costly mm. than the face-to-face -face universities. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Prof, for joining us this morning. Uh, thank we you. really appreciate your uh, thank time. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Spending with us. Yeah. This has been AU Talks on AU TV. In case you just join in, you can go back to watch our program on Association of African Universities on Facebook and on YouTube. Thank you for joining us and have a great day.